In this presentation, we are going to talk about energy. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a, in a big picture kind of way, not what, uh, what we experience when we take physics, where we talk about kinetic energy and potential energy. We're going to talk about energy sources and where it comes from. For example, we'll talk about renewable and non-renewable sources, as well as inexhaustible resources. And we'll talk about different examples for each of those categories. First, let's talk about you. Where do you get your energy? Well, of course you get it from food. Uh, now here we show uh, something that we all love to eat, or at least most of us love to eat, unless you're a vegetarian. If you're a vegetarian, you can just remove the hamburger patty. But here we have a hamburger, we have some pickles, and some, some plant matter, and a bun. Let's take a look at where all that comes from. Well, the hamburger, of course, comes from beef, which is an animal, and the lettuce and the tomatoes and the pickles all come from plants, as well as the bun. The bun comes from wheat, uh, sugar, and, and those all come from plants. But let's let's take a step up and let's consider the, the cow, where the beef comes from. Where do they get their energy, and what do they eat? Well, they eat other animals sometimes, and they eat plants. But we still haven't discovered the true source of that energy because plants have to get their energy from somewhere. And where do they get their energy? Well, they get their energy from the sun. So I guess we could say then that animals, because we eat plants, get our energy from the sun. So you might remember from biology you learned about photosynthesis, where water and carbon dioxide and solar power and chlorophyll all come together uh, through the process of photosynthesis to form glucose in the plants. And that's what gives animals and us our energy. So we figured out that plants and animals are basically solar powered creatures and living things. But let's take a step back for a second and talk about energy in the big picture. What exactly is energy? Well, energy is the ability to do work. Uh, and work has a very specific definition, which we'll get to a little bit later. But energy basically gives us the ability to do stuff. And we find that there are three different sources of energy that uh, we can classify. They're renewable, non-renewable, and inexhaustible. And what we're going to find in the coming slides is that pretty much all of those sources come from the sun in some form or another. So let's take a look at some of those. First, let's take a look at non-renewable energy sources. The definition of non-renewable uh, essentially implies that you can only use it once and it can't be replaced. And one of the biggest sources of uh, fuel that meets our energy needs are, are fossil fuels. So examples are coal, oil, and natural gas. Um, and we use these every day. You know, oil can be refined into gasoline and kerosene, jet fuel, and all kinds of other products, even used uh, in the manufacture of plastics. So when you hear the term alternative energy, basically that means that that's any type of fuel or energy that's not identified as a fossil fuel. But how are coal and petroleum and natural gas, how are those formed? I had a teacher once who used to say uh, when he needed to put gas in his car that he was going to go put some dead dinosaur juice in his, in his gas tank. And, and while it was kind of funny and interesting, that's not really where it comes from. I invite the viewer, though, to go to the URL shown on this slide in red, and uh, it shows a really cool... Um, animation of where coal and oil come from and how they're formed and then come back to the to the presentation
So after watching that animation, we find that coal and petroleum come from basically decayed plants. And we know that plants get their energy from the sun. So uh, coal, petroleum, and natural gas are essentially solar powered. Let's take a look at another non-renewable energy source, particularly uh, uranium. Uh, uranium is uh, most commonly used in nuclear energy and we get about 20 percent of the world's electricity that comes from nuclear power interesting thing about this is scientists have always thought that uranium which is a heavy element comes from exploding stars uh, there's a lot of math that goes into that a really interesting thing though is that in august of this year scientists saw two neutron stars colliding and they were actually able to physically see uranium being produced by that explosion so they were able to prove their theory that is one of the most amazing things that's ever been seen with a telescope Well, now let's talk a little bit about renewable energy sources. Renewable implies, of course, that that source can, can be replaced once it's used. So let's talk about uh, some of the sources that fall into that category. Animals, for example. Um, here we show uh, you know, a dog sled, and animals have been used throughout history to perform work. Uh, and in some countries, they still do. Um, and you can think of an ox or horse that uh, might pull a plow um, or help turn uh, some type of mill that does work, uh, especially field work. Food, of course, you know, fuels us, and we've already talked a little bit about that at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, a real big uh, area of renewable energy source is biomass, and specifically biofuel. Um, Ethanol, for example, comes from crops. Um, here in the Midwest, we see a lot of corn and a lot of soybeans. In fact, if you pay attention, it, it, once you get out of the Chicago area, if you drive west, for example, on Interstate 80, if you've ever been on a college visit to Iowa or Nebraska or someplace west, you've probably driven by um, ethanol plants where they take corn and soybeans and they turn that into um, ethanol fuel. Um, ethanol is in the gasoline that we use every day even in Illinois. If you've ever seen a, an E85 uh, fuel, that is 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline. Methanol is also another kind of alcohol um, and that's made from coal or biomass. So biomass essentially comes from plant materials and, and even animal waste also falls into that category. And the third and final category of energy sources is inexhaustible energy. Uh, and these differ from renewable in the fact that renewable uh, energy sources are consumed and then they have to be regrown uh, or, or replenished, whereas inexhaustible sources are pretty much always there. They might vary in their quantities, but they're always there. So here you see a first example, which is hydroelectric power. Uh, and when we talk about hydroelectric power, we normally think of dams. So a dam will take water uh, and it will run water through a turbine, which turns a generator, which is a, a, a mass of coiled wire around a magnet. And when you turn a, a wire inside a magnet, it creates electricity. And the second type of uh, inexhaustible energy source relating to water is tidal power. So there we use the incoming and outgoing tide, which is really caused by the gravity of the moon. And it simply harnesses that energy that flows in and out um, and it turns turbines and operates a lot like um, hydroelectric source. Geothermal energy is another source of inexhaustible supply. Um, and here in this example shown from the U.S. Department of Energy, this is a, uh, a hot geothermal example. Um, and in this example, this is generally available in the U.S., 
west of the Rocky Mountains, where the crust is pretty thin, the Earth's crust, um, and they have to uh, drill their well about a kilometer deep. And what happens is uh, they pump water in one side, cold water in, and from the other side they uh, extract hot water, or essentially steam, and they use that steam to turn a turbine, uh, to turn a generator to create electricity. East of the Rockies, we don't see those as much because the, uh, the earth is uh, a lot thicker. We do see some heat pumps, which uh, can be used to heat some homes through uh, with hot water and such, but they're not really used as uh, electricity generators. If you look at Iceland, uh, they get a tremendous amount of their energy through geothermal means. Wind is yet another inexhaustible source of energy. Um, in the Midwest, especially west of Illinois, when you get into Iowa, Nebraska, and the Great Plains, you see a lot of, they call them wind farms. Um, even if you drive from uh, Naperville to Champaign, you drive through uh, some smaller wind farms. And really here we just have a turbine. It's just like a big propeller, uh, several blades that capture the wind. And then in the lower right, you can see how it turns a using a set of gears, which is used to uh, control the rate of rotation. It turns a shaft in a generator and that generator creates electricity, uh, which is then uh, distributed to wherever it's needed. One of the interesting drawbacks so about wind energy is actually very noisy. And of course, we've been talking about the sun throughout and how it provides for uh, a lot of our energy. Of course, the last inexhaustible energy source is solar power. And solar power can come in a couple of different forms. Uh, for example, here you see a space station or a spacecraft which, turn, which uses uh, uh, photovoltaic cells which turn photons directly into electricity. Um, that's how a lot of satellites, uh, earthbound satellites anyway, uh, generate their power. But it can also gather uh, with the PS10 here you see on the lower left. What that does is it's a tower that concentrates the sun's rays to produce steam. So it doesn't take, turn the photons into electricity, it concentrates the sun's heat to produce steam, and then that steam powers a generator to create electricity. <laughs> 